£169,000 per person to send people to Rwanda if they shouldn't be in the UK. Is that value for money? It's not. Uh, this is enormously expensive. And if, um, if you followed that cost through to the whole asylum system, it would cost four times more than we're paying at the moment. So it's not good value for money. OK, so what would you do differently? Well, to get the, uh, to get the numbers down, uh, there's a number of things which are out with the passing of these pieces of declaratory legislation. Uh, you've got to process the claims quicker, uh, which has become much slower uh, to find out who should be here and who shouldn't and then act accordingly. Uh, you have to crack down more uh, vigorously on the gangs who are organising this trade. You've got to get returns agreements in place uh, because uh, we haven't got enough of those in place at the moment. And you have to cooperate with other countries in trying to stop this trade. Uh, it's a tough problem to crack, but these are the hard measures that you have to do. If we end up paying £170,000 for every person, this is going to cost the country a huge amount of money. But if it deters 37% of people from crossing the channel, these are all statistics, we're actually talking about individual people's lives, of course, but if 37% of people don't come as a result of this deterrent, then it's value for money. Well, let's see what happens there. Uh, so far, it certainly doesn't seem to have uh, had that kind of impact. Um, talk to me, if you would, in a little bit more detail about the uh, financial um, support for people seeking asylum. The, uh, we're hearing that uh, that should be increased. At present, it's 70% of of universal credit, or oh, sorry, that's that's what Caroline Noakes and her committee would like it to be. Um, we've been running a poll this morning from our viewers about how they feel about supporting um, yeah. illegal migrants. Depends on which side of the fence you are, whether they're illegal or, or not. And they would not support doing that. Yeah, we don't have proposals to change this at the moment. Um, this is a system we're already spending uh, three point eight billion pounds a year on, uh, I believe. Uh, and it's costing a huge amount of money already. We're spending six or seven million pounds a day uh, so to keep people to work, in hotels. People? No, you can only go to work if you are legally uh, entitled to be here. How can you live on 45 pounds a week? Look, it's really, really tough for people. Uh, and what you've got to do is speed up the processing of the claim. And if you're then judged to be legally entitled to be in the country, then the situation is you can work. But we don't have a proposal to let people work before their status is clarified. £45 pounds a week, how do people... It's really, that? really tough, but this is an expensive system and I'm afraid I can't sit here at the moment and say that we are committed to spending more than that on it. Uh, Chancellor is uh, meeting uh, banks uh, to tell them that they need to pass on interest rate hikes to savers. They're not doing that quick enough. What's Labour's view? Well, they should, um, for two reasons. Uh, first of all, people can see their mortgage rates going up and uh, people are being hit with increases of four or five hundred pounds a month when they get a renewal Talking letter. Savers, sure. Um, uh, and at the same time as those mortgage rates are going up, your savings rate available in a, an instant access account, what people would regard as a normal savings account, uh, can be as low as one percent, despite interest rates going up 13 times over the past two years. So. Uh, banks have got to do more to pass those on, but it's also an anti-inflationary measure. Because would, let, let's stay with that. What purpose. would you do? How would you make them do that? Because well, banks the, are always the bogeymen, aren't they? Sure, but the regulators got to put more pressure on them uh, to do this. We announced a package for on mortgage relief last week. We said the regulator yeah, really had to make savings. that happen. The regulators got to put more pressure on the banks to pass. What would that on. look like? Well, they've, they, you know, they can tell them to do it. Um, they, you know, they can, they can make them do it, perhaps, in the, in the in extreme. What way? Uh, well, the, reg the regulator regulates them. Uh, yeah, but what doing... would Labour like to see happen? I mean, you we'd know, like to see Chief these... Secretary, Shadow Chief Secretary of the Treasury. Yeah. What, if you were in charge, what would you be saying to the banks? You'd call them and you'd say, guys, come on, you need to do this. Absolutely, or... absolutely. What stick would you these, use? These rates have got to be uh, passed on. You'd see if the regulator can force them to do it. It's quite difficult to force, you know, banks to do a particular thing, but anyone can see the disparity between getting hit with a 6% rate on your mortgage and being offered 1% on your savings. Yeah, but what, what, I, I press you again on what can actually be done. When the banks needed the support of uh, the British government, came cap in hand, they were in a lot of trouble, 
They were given billions of pounds. Well, you know, that going back to that, that, that was really about bailing out the British people as well from a bank collapse. And if we hadn't done that, the cash machines would have stopped working. You'd have had social chaos. Uh, so that was a measure to protect the public from a bank collapse as well. Right now, we want to see the banks responding to uh, higher interest rates in two ways. One, show some understanding to your borrowers. And we talked about that with mortgage rates. And secondly, make sure that your savers benefit from this because that's partly an anti-inflationary measure uh, too. The whole point of raising interest rates is supposed to be that people do different things with their money. And one of those should be to save more. And if you in increase the rates you're offering for savers, that should help with that aim. Does the Governor of the Bank of England enjoy your full support? Yes. Uh, and so he's right to increase interest rates in the way that he has? We've given the Bank of England a job. And it's really important that they be allowed to do that job. And I see this debate around politics at the moment of uh, blame the bank. And we gave the bank, when I say we, I mean the Labour Party gave the Bank of England independence when we were in government uh, a long time ago. And when we did that, we gave them the job of controlling inflation and setting interest rates. Not doing and, a good job of that, and, are they? And I think it would be a real mistake for politicians to start second-guessing those decisions now, undermining the independence of the bank. Because if you remember that disastrous Tory mini-budget last September, part of the backdrop to that was uh, the Tory government undermining the economic institutions, the bank, the Treasury, the OBR, and that shook international confidence in the UK's financial management. So 5% We're not is about good. to make... So 5% is, is appropriate, is... and if it goes up even higher, which is somewhere predicting it's got another one and a quarter percent uh, in uh, rate rises before it starts to come back down again, Andrew Bailey would still have your full support. It's not about saying any interest rate is good. It's about saying they've got a job, they should be allowed to I do that they're job. They're doing a good job. Uh, they've got their legislative job. They should be allowed to get on with it, they're and politicians... Uh, I have confidence in the bank. I'm not about to second-guess them because uh, I think that would be worse for the UK's financial stability and would send a really bad signal out to international markets uh, and to others that the UK government or the UK opposition didn't have confidence in its central bank. That's not a signal I'm about to Here send. Here comes the Just Stop Oil question. Uh, your party takes money from Dale Vince... Um, who also supports um, Just Stop Oil. Trevor Nielsen, who co-founded the Climate Emergency Fund, has said that Just Stop Oil have gone too far. Uh, the disruption is just for the sake of disruption. Um, do you agree with that? I'm not in favour of any disruption that stops people getting to work, going about their business, uh, getting to medical appointments and so on. Some of these protests have been uh, enormously disruptive. I'm also not in favour of anybody disrupting sporting events. We saw it with the snooker. We've had threats of it with other events. Uh, I think these protesters should stop doing this but and Dale let Vince, people go about their business. He's on the show, actually, in just a short time. He, who support, also supports the Labour Party, supports Just Stop Oil financially, and he went on a march with them. Well, you've got to ask him about... Well, no, but I'm asking you, because he's, he's not sat in front of well, me at I've the moment. Well, I've just told you what I think. Yeah, but should he be doing that? Should he be taking Look, money from somebody who does this sort of thing? If somebody gives us money... Uh, I don't legislate for everything else that they want to do with their money, but I've got a very clear view on these protests, how destructive they are, and the right for people to go about their daily business. And what would you say to Dale Vince about going on future demonstrations? He's a free citizen. I would hope he wouldn't go on anything that would disrupt a well, sporting he event. He has already. Well, I would hope, as I say, no one would take part in disruption of sporting events or stopping people going about their daily business. I want to see people get to work. I want to see them get to their medical appointments. I, want, I don't want the motorway blocked, anything like that. There's ways to make a point. These are not the best ways so to make a point. So just stop it, Mr Vince. It's not a good idea. It's not about Mr Vince. Well, it's it is, about he's letting one people, of those that demonstrate It's it. about letting people go about their daily business. That's what I want to see. I think I've been quite clear. I, you haven't. That's why I keep pressing <laughs> you on it. Should he continue to do this? It's a matter for him. Uh, who he funds, but these protests are doing... No, he's on the protest march. He went... I mean, he, he slowed a down... A protest march thing. is one thing, but stopping people going about their business so is another. So don't do it is what you're saying. I don't want any of them to do it. There you go.
you were clear eventually. Pat McFadden, it's always a pleasure. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed.